especially after 2008 Olympics, I have been watching how China step by step buying out American politicians, how China used its traditional strategy to corrupt American politics. You know, the problem is that it's like, it's like virus. American politicians have no immunity. Uh, Hunter Biden made all this, the business deals with China, one mm -hmm. after another. Namaskar. This is Sri Iyer of P Gurus, and you all know me. And today I'm going to introduce to you a new guest, someone whose story is going to blow you away. More importantly, the story that we are going to cover is even more impressive. And it is time that the world woke up to the Byzantine ways in which politicians make money, have all these influences and alliances. And, and this is going to blow your mind away. I request all of our viewers to watch this thing till the end because Sasha has put in a lot of time putting up this PowerPoint presentation that we are going to walk you through. And it involves perhaps the most important person in the world today, President Joe Biden and his family. Without further ado, let's welcome Sasha Gong. Sasha, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. How are you today? I'm great. Thank you so much. So viewers, we're going to learn more about Sasha in the course of this conversation, but I just want to start by saying Sasha Gong is a writer, a scholar, a journalist, and a filmmaker. And I thank my good friend Elmer for connecting uh, Sasha with me because here we have somebody who's going to tell you a story that perhaps you have not heard. At least in India, we're all spoiled. We, we, we have our noisy things. We will run people down in terms of like saying you are not good, I'm not good and so on and so forth. But you don't get sent away to do hard labor. You can hardly know who you are and what is around you. So Sasha, welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm sorry, I took a little bit of time setting up the preamble. Tell me a little bit about your early years. You're born in People's Republic of China. How was life when you were uh, young? And, and just tell us your life story you know, in a brief uh, way. Uh, in a nutshell. <laughs> so <laughs> that's uh, the in only thing I can do because uh, you read all this, my bio with all these professions. That means I'm kind of old. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, in, <laughs> no, you're impressive. It's... You're impressive. It's all right. It's all right. So I was born in China in the 1950s and I came to the States in 1987. So I actually spent more time in the United States than when I was in China. And I was born in China in uh, a, a professor's family. And uh, then uh, when I was nine, my family was accused of being counter-revolutionary and we were sent to countryside. So I only had three years of education before college. When then I worked at, as a peasant, as a worker for more than a decade. And in 1974, I got involved in uh, the underground protest movement for writing articles. So I was put in jail for a year for doing that. And uh, later in the late 1970s, after Mao's death, I was exonerated and released. And I took a college exam, which was reopened that time. I went to Peking University studying history. By the way, wait, 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 I spent wait, 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 wait. You stopped yeah. the best part. You topped in Guangdong province. That is an impressive achievement. Uh, yes, but... But well, that only means I memorize everything. And I have a story to tell for that. Sure. And I, I was in jail when school reopened. So one of my jailers said, hey, I want to go. I want to take the exam, but I don't know. I never went to high school like me. I said, well, bring the books in and we study and I teach you. So I study when I was in jail, having nothing else to do. Then, and after I was release, released, I took the exam. Uh, that's, I was lucky. I have nothing else to do. I don't need to wash dishes, I go to work and just sit in jail rotten and uh, read orders. So that's how. 
Wow. So, so, so you got a BA and an MA in Peking University. And in 1987, something very nice happened to you. Yes, I came to Harvard. But before that, I have to say to the Indian audience, I spent a lot of time studying Indian history. Uh, oh, you especially, did? Yes, the 19th and 20th century Indian history. I wrote a very long thesis in the 1980s uh, studying the triangle trade of the Indian cotton yarn industry and uh, the trade between India, China, and uh, Great Britain. Wow, wow, fascinating, fascinating. And uh, so then you came to Harvard and you were studying sociology there. You've got a PhD yes. from Harvard in 1995. Then what happened? Well, and uh, I study, I love this country and the study to be a scholar. So I went to teach at UCLA. And uh, later I taught in a couple of universities, but something hit me because in China, you know, I'm not sure if the same thing in India, but when in my youth, well, in my youth, I had no education. So we believe in what the more education we have, the more freedom we will have. Yes. And so I went all the way from China and got a PhD and I realized I could do nothing else except teaching. I resent it. So I quit my job <laughs> and uh, I always loved journalism. So I came to Washington and became a journalist. Do you know, this is this is really, really, uh, you know, very, very uh, striking. Because Sasha, mm -hmm. you you are a professor. I mean, you, 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 if you take the academic track, you get tenured and then life is easy, you know, you, you, and and you then you choose the rough and tumble mm -hmm. of being a journalist. Of course, you were in perhaps the best place on the earth, Washington, D.C., that gives you, uh, you know, helps you rub shoulders with the high and mighty and so on and so forth. But that was a very bold decision, and I tip my hat to you on that. I am still an occasional media personality. I write, but nothing compares to what you have done so far. And, and Sasha, you've known a lot of the people that we are going to talk about in the course of mm -hmm. these conversations. Viewers, we have mm -hmm. about four or five conversations planned with Sasha. And these are basically what we are going to do is give you a little bit more insight about a very important book that got released just a few days ago. It is selling like hotcakes. And I'm going to introduce you into that. And I think Sasha is going to walk us through because she knows many of these people. So there is going to be a lot of interesting stuff. So Sasha, I request you to take it away. Tell me when you want me to start the PowerPoint and I'll be happy okay. to do so. Yeah, sure, sure. I have the PowerPoint in front of me as well. And okay. that is just a guide to for our audience. But uh, in the, would you show the page one for the the, the yes. yeah, that's the title. Yes. And that, that's yes. the author. The title yeah. of the book is called Red Handed. Called Red Handed. The author's name is Peter Schweizer. Peter Schweizer is an investigative journalist. And he played a very important role in American politics because uh, more than a decade ago, he wrote a book called Clinton Cash, which plays a very big role in the 2016 election, as you can imagine. And in that book, he actually uh, exposed how the Clinton family make money from politics and all the connections. It's very and another very interesting book. So, and he also made a made a documentary film on that, uh, which you know later. That's another story. I promise I will tell the story when time is right, but maybe not today because today we are going to uh, introduce chapter one of the book. Uh, it's about the Biden family. Would you put up the second it's slide? Uh, we all know. President Biden is in the middle, and uh, uh, on the on the left hand is his son Hunter Biden. And uh, perhaps I need to give a little bit introduction of the Biden family. Yes. Uh, President Biden is from Delaware. Actually, he was born in Pennsylvania. He lived in Delaware. 
He ran for the Senate when he was 29 years old. United States Constitution, if you remember, said you have, you, you have to be 30 in order to be a senator. So he ran him when he was 29, when he, when, when he was sworn in, he was 30. And uh, he was one of the longest serving senators in the Senate for many years. You know, that's one thing about his family. And also I think it's related to what happened here. Uh, he, after he got elected, before he was sworn in, his wife <clears throat> and his, his daughter and the two sons were involved in a car accident. His wife was killed and his daughter was killed. The two sons survived. The older son's name is Bo Biden. The younger son's name is Hunter Biden. So like many, many American uh, political families, they arrange the older son got involved in politics, the younger son in business. President Biden married his current wife, uh, wife uh, later, but anyway, that's the two sons are the core of the family. And uh, in order to be in politics, you have to behave yourself, right? So his older son, Bo Biden, went to fight in Iraq. And uh, well, uh, at when, Biden was, uh, when Biden was elected vice president in 2008, his seat was uh, taken, well, assigned to a guy, uh, what's his name? I actually know him. <laughs> Uh, Edward, no, something, anyway, doesn't matter. That guy was supposed to sit in that seat for two years. And uh, America called that a seat warmer. Yes. Warm the seat and for his son. Then what happened is that his son got brain cancer, Bo Biden. And Bo Biden at that time was elected to be attorney general. In of Delaware. Delaware, right. Yeah, and Bo Biden died. And uh, of course, uh, the Biden family was heartbroken. And that, and that time, the younger son already involved in, already involved in business. And if you look at that, you know, the younger son was extremely spoiled because of that family history. And I think that that's relevant to what we say, our yes. case. Yes. And it's not, it's not in the book, but you know, I just want to give you some background. Sure, and sure. I, yeah. I have been in Washington for too long. So somehow being a journalist in Washington, you, you got a lot of stories. Of course, of course. Anyway, so that's the case. Sasha, uh, what you're saying is very important because beyond the name, many Indians don't know much about Joe Biden. I mean, that he went through this tragedy early on in his life and uh, that, you know, two sons were left and one unfortunately died of brain cancer and now... He's left with only one son from that first marriage. I don't know how many kids he has from the second marriage. Uh, one, I think a daughter. I see, I see. Yeah, but uh, so far, it, uh, well, the only two sons are very involved in business and public lives. Right. So, Bo Biden, I, I actually bumped into him once in a gathering looks like a very nice young man anyway. But Hunter Biden, I never met him. Uh, I met Joe Biden, of course, he's in Washington for so long. And of course, you know, uh, as journalists, we met him multiple times. Uh, and he's, he's actually personally, he's a very personable guy, very engaging guy. And I have no personal dislike against him, only his policy. Of course. And at that time, you know, one thing happened, I, I'm not sure how familiar of, uh, your audience in this. You know, actually, through um, 2000, well, especially after 2008, the Olympics, I have been watching how China step by step buying out American politicians through this very Chinese way. The Chinese way of of um, corruption. You know, China, China's one country that before I get into more details, I want to say, yes, China yes. has the culture uh, of corruption. This culture, the Chinese actually call that assimilation. 
that assimilate you, make you like them. That's what the Chinese, the Chinese culture develops throughout the history of being conquered by nomadic people. So they corrupt you with their lifestyle, with money, and uh, in the age of globalization, that's how they start corrupt the world. It's very important. And uh, so in the past 15, 20 years I, in Washington, I've been watching how China used its traditional strategy to corrupt American politics. You know, the problem is that it's like, it's like virus. American politicians have no immunity on this. So that's, uh, and um, uh, also the Biden family. So this book introduced us to what, what's happening in the uh, Biden family business. Hunter Biden, the first time Hunter Biden, you, well, it's not a China expert, right? 2013, Joe Biden, who was the vice president at that time, went to visit China. <clears throat> and uh, on Air Force Two, he brought his son, Hunter Biden. And well, before, actually, even before there's so much to talk, you know, Obama's family, Obama has a, a brother from he, uh, with a different mother, his father's ex-wife, I think, or, or late, I, well, his mother was his American wife. He also had wife in Kenya, had wife in Kenya. Uh, one of the sons actually is living in China, Obama's brother, and also married a Chinese. So in that administration dealing with China, it's like the norm. Anyway, Hunter Biden went to China with his father, Joe Biden. They went to China and Biden went to talk to his official business with the Chinese government. And Hunter Biden went on his trip, <coughs> sorry about that, uh, went on to business. And he made a series of business deals, which are very crucial. I think we haven't even seen how, how that business well, impact America, not yet. We will see a lot more because what, uh, what, uh, what's said in the book or the cases we are going to introduce are only part of the cases I know. I actually get a lot more information and uh, I need, well, I need more confirmation. Anyway, Hunter Biden made all this, the business deals with China and then let, let us, go through the business deals mentioned in the book, one mm -hmm. after another. We are talking about five. In that business, um, altogether, Hunter Biden gets uh, 31 million plus dollars from all the China deals. But this first one is the major deal. The major deal, remember, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden went to China and Hunter Biden went on to talk business. And uh, he found this company with a bunch of Chinese in uh, 2013. If you look at the four partners, who are they? The, the company was formed in the beginning with, it's a $2 billion investment deal. He owns 10% of one company, not the entire deal. So okay, okay. I, look, look at I. So that's how it com It's complicated. Mm, and mm. in 2013, had four partners. The four partners, two partners are Chinese. One partner is America. One partner is mixed. Let's talk uh, uh, through this one after another. Sure. First, the first company I listed there. If you look at four partners. The first yeah. one is called Bohai International Investment Fund. Bohai In International Investment Fund is backed by Bank of China. So that's big enough. The second called Harvest Capital Management. Harvest Capital Management is the biggest hedge fund in China. Uh, wealth management. It's also 
party owned, state owned. So if you look at this, the new two major companies are backed by Chinese capital. The third one is called, uh, called Rosemount Seneca, which is Hunter Biden's company. Remember, a Hunter Biden's company had three partners. Hunter Biden and uh, another partner's name is Christopher Hans. Who is Christopher Hans? Uh, if you, you guys, I'm not sure if Indian use the Hans ketchup. If you yes, come yes, to America, yes. all the ketchup, that's yes, the Hans, Hans family. Hans, but right. who is the Hans family? Hans family, um, the origin, the Hans, the old Hans was a senator from Pennsylvania. He died in, I think in early nine, in some 1990s. And uh, he was Republican. After he, after he died, he left a $500 million empire to his wife, Teresa Haynes. Teresa Haynes, at that time, 55 years old, married John Kerry, 50, right. year, 50 years old, who was senator from Massachusetts. So Christopher Haynes, Hunter Biden's partner, was stepson of John Kerry the former Secretary of State. You see all the interest link? Yes, yes. What, what so, other thing? I think Teresa was born in South Africa, right? Uh, yes, he, well, Patrick, he, he's already, he's her, her, her first language is Portuguese, I remember. Portuguese, he I was, see. Yeah, he was uh, that time when he met her, her husband, when she met her husband, uh, she was uh, a UN interpreter. Hmm. That's a long I time see. ago, very long I time see. ago. Mm. Yeah, and uh, don't blame me for, I'm in Washington for too long, so I remember all the gossips. <laughs> <laughs> That's what adds more, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, masala to this. You know what masala is? Spice. Masala is Indian ah, yeah. word for spice. Of course, I, I love it. I love it. And, uh, <laughs> masala, well, I love Indian food. I love Indian restaurants. And well, Wonderful. anyway, so, yeah. so that's the third partner. The third partner, actually, that company did not put real money in. The money was put in by the Chinese. Oh, oh. So it's just a name given. Just a name was given. Yes. Mm. They are partners, but they're not putting in money. And the fourth group is also very interesting. It's the Thornton Group. Who's the Thornton Group? We are going to talk about John Thornton later. I have one PowerPoint, you know, one page on him. But is this was... the Goldman Sachs guy? Yes, the Goldman Sachs ah, guy. Ah, ah, ah. My God, this is a small, small, tight circle of people benefiting from each other. Yes, yes. <laughs> so what you see is that this is the Washington, Wall Street, and the China all combined together. When you look at the company structure, this is what globalization and what China influence means. Right. right. I, I, I don't even know what, what, what else to say. Uh, when you see it, it's a, Jesus Christ, Washington swamp, or <laughs> Beijing swamp, very swampy. Okay, and go to the next slide. Yeah. We see Hunter Biden's personal information in yes. their company webpage. He was one of nine board members. And uh, in 2019, when Joe Biden was running for president, uh, well, he quit when the news came out that he's doing all this business in China, how corrupt and all this, he quit. But he's, he quit the board does not mean he quit the money. He did not quit the money. You see it here. Uh, let's go to the next slide, the second yeah. case. The second case is called Burn Asset Management. Management, it's a management of office buildings and stuff. They have property, they manage property in many places. Sometimes if you look at this, well, Hunter Biden, either, either, he's, either he's a cheat or he's a genius because he can do all this, right? He's, he claimed to be an artist as well now. And anyway, <laughs> so, Hunter Biden is, is the major owner 
of this, uh, this company. And um, so after they set up that company in 2013 in Shanghai, and the Hunter Biden asked the Harvest Group to invest in his company. Harvest Group, without talking much, approved the investment and the invest $5 million. In any standard, that is a bribe. Uh, just one, one small thing for our viewers. So far, we have mm -hmm. looked for how much? $25 million. $20 million in the previous slide and yeah. 5 million here. So total of 25 yes. million. And, and one yes. thing that is striking, many of the viewers may not know, is in any corporation in China, there is a person from the CCP who sort of, I guess, what can we say, remote manages the company? How would you like to describe that? Well, the CCP, if it's a government uh, entity, state-owned, the CCP secretary, core secretary, is number one in the company. CEO is number two. Oh, so wow. in, many, in many occasions, you would see that's the party secretary and the CEO all in one person. We will see that later in one of the slides. But anyway, what we see here is Harvest Global just simply gave $5 million to Hunter Biden's company without much question. So if you go to the next slide, that's the logo of this company. Remember, that's the biggest wealth management company in China, hedge fund. And it's 100% state-owned. And uh, the one who controlled, as I said, both one person, the party secretary, and the CEO. That is the company. Wow. Anyway, so let's go to the third one. That, that's Rosemont Realty. Uh, Hunter Biden, so far, they only found $188,000 to, to him. He's one of the partners. And, uh, but the more interesting angle here is in 2016, I believe, uh, a Hong Kong company called Gemini Investment proposed to buy the company for uh, $300 million. Oh, wow. Or more. Or more. We don't know. And, but but we, so far, uh, the author could not find any paper trail documents on that sale. You only find one payment to Hunter Biden, which is 180000 But here's a very interesting angle. If you see Gemini investment in Hong Kong, that company is owned by a very huge conglomerate, state owned. And I'm sure that many Indian people recognize that as well, called Costco. Oh. C O S C O. Not, not the company, not the shopping place. That's Costco with a T. This one yes. has no T. Right. Costco right. is what company? If you go to any port, any port in the world, you look at all the, the containers, you see the name Costco there. What is Costco? Costco is China's state-owned shipping company. So when you think of all the goods from China shipped, it's shipped by Costco. That's how big the company is. It's a humongous company and a state-owned. And the Hunter Biden's business is working with them. One small mention here, Sasha. I used to work in a company which uh, was adjacent to Costco Warehouse. And mm -hmm. this is in Fremont, California. And uh -huh. I used to always wonder, what, what is this Costco without the T? And, and everything, every container will have this huge Costco sign, right? And mm -hmm. I used to wonder, thanks for clarifying that. I used to wonder what this was. They were yeah. everywhere. Yeah. China's uh, ocean shipment company. Uh, oh, I can wow. find what it really stands. Yeah. But it, you see, you work there, you see the with Costco without tea there all right. the time. On the, on the road and the people, you know, most people actually say, oh, Costco, or the, the place we shop. No. 
that's the Chinese company. And that's the Chinese company which ship all the Chinese goods. Yes. To your stores. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, let's go to the next slide. So next, the fourth case is a company called CFEC, China Energy. China Energy, this is a non-state private owned, but that's the biggest private, that's the biggest private energy company in China. Humongous company. The, the word private, we can't, we can't treat the, the word private uh, in a real capitalist country like China and India as the one in China. Right. In China, if you get big enough, you have to have the states back for right. one very simple reason. Well, do you need bank loan? All the banks owned by China, by right. the Chinese government. Right. So without working with the government, the officials without corruption, you won't grow. It is that simple. Uh, so Sasha, uh, I, now we have accounted for 31 million 188,000. That is no. Yes. Somehow, yes. somehow, you know, and, and we are going to deal with some of the individuals that were facilitating all these things in the next few slides. Yeah. But, you know, big picture, I think there is a big number somewhere hidden still that has not been brought out in this book. Maybe Peter Schweizer will write mm -hmm. it in the next book. <laughs> uh, I think, well, the way the way he writes it, he knows. Uh, even I know a lot of these cases, but it knowing is one thing, confirming is another. Yes, yes, yes. So, yes. but this, you see, the interesting part here is that the five million dollars, right? Um, five million, forgivable and interest-free loan. Give me such a loan, I don't care. You know, I know. I, I wish I had a friend like that. <laughs> yeah, I wish I had a friend like that. Uh, we are going to introduce his friends. Yes. Here. So go to the next slide. It's also a very interesting case. Right. The next slide, which was big news in America at the time, Patrick Ho. Patrick Ho is from Hong Kong, and he he worked for the Hong Kong government. He go, and in two thousand seventeen. Patrick Ho was arrested by FBI because he tried to bribe a bunch of uh, African, uh, Af in New York, to bribe a bunch of African chief, uh, well, a state, uh, state heads in order to gain oil interest and other business there. So he was arrested and he was accused for eight count of, uh, of crimes and uh, the jury convicted him and you know but Hunter Biden who has the he has the law degree from Yale never never ever went on court never never ever had any experience in defending a client and he was giving a million dollars to be his lawyer to be host lawyer <laughs> Anyway, so Sasha, now Sasha, he, uh, Sasha, you know, uh, uh, Elmer once told me jokingly that whenever the Chinese political leadership comes to Harvard to get a degree, they, they bring a person along who actually writes their assignments, their test papers, everything, submits it in these people's names and gets them the degree. I wonder who or if this happened with uh, Hunter Biden also. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to talk about it. And uh, what they have, they actually have all those people, you know, who are assigned politicians. You deal with this one, you deal with that one, you deal with this. And the way they, these people are trained agents, what they do is that, okay, see, we know this politicians, this politician, oh, let's say a senator. We are going to talk about the senators senators later a senator this senator how much does he or she worth perhaps we can we can get 
him or her on board, and she works in this committee, they say intelligence. How much she, how much she, she, she's worth? Okay, twenty million dollars. So China would structure the business of structure back. So let's find a way to help her to gain that twenty million dollars. It's not that you know the, they are doing that. They are doing the bribery in reverse. Not doing that. Okay, I give you twenty million dollars. You do this. No, they set up a business and everything looks legit. And reverse engineer all the way to the person. Wow! Wow! Mind blowing. Yeah. So, what we are understanding, and viewers, again, I want you to be really, really careful to listen to what Sasha is saying. He is practically the entire political ecosystem of United States is in the pockets of China, Russia, who knows who else. I know definitely it is not in the pockets of India. India does a very poor <laughs> job of lobbying. But that you probably know too, Sasha. Oh yeah, yeah, I know. And uh, I I talk to Indian people. I say, why don't you guys more be more active? India is the biggest democracy in the world, and uh, you guys, you actually India has more larger population than China now. And why 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 don't you have more appearance in Washington? And uh, my the answer I got is, well, we Indians are very passive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm not sure that's true. There are there are and exceptions. They, there, there are exceptions. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a virtue. Yes. That's a virtue for being. You know, I my my business. You mind your yours. And uh, when we do legit business, we do, and we don't do that kind of active lobbying. But right. I do think India needs more. Ah. Uh, exposure let me yes, say yes yes, in, yes yes yeah yes. so anyway so let's go to introduce our audience the biden's friends the first one and you know one thing about all this these people are very interesting and uh, if you look at chinese corrupt businessmen lots of them have very humble beginnings the reason of humble beginnings is that you know people with humble beginnings, well, not of course not most of people, but some are willing to do a lot of things normal people would not do. So keep that in mind. That let's introduce one after another. The first one, Hunter is Hunter's personal friend. Uh, they either give him money, do business, and uh, talk to him every week and stuff like that. So. Look at the first person who does business with Hunter. This guy is Chur, called Chu from the. Uh, I put the last name in all cap, the capital. Then the Chinese way is that we do last name first and first name last. Okay. So the last name is Chu. He was. He is still. I think it maybe was. But I don't know if they have divorced. Uh, son-in-law of the president of Bank of China, Dai Xiangnong. And this guy also came from a very humble beginning, was a peddler, and happened to know the daughter of Bank of China. And he, the as the president, he was not the president yet. He was still local some cadre. They met, and they make they got married. He chased her for ten years, and they got married. And suddenly, this once a small peddler and salesman like. Uh, was able to build with government money, build build a huge business empire. Huge, we are talking about hundreds of billions. Huge. So, anyway, and uh, well, later he was uh, in the. Uh, I think he was arrested in two thousand fourteen, something like that. He, you know. He had a lot of dealing with the West. One thing, after he was arrested, the Chinese government accused him for for releasing or selling financial business or government financial decisions to the to Western businessmen. And that that was actually later the Chinese government when the case developed, the Chinese government was kind of scared because. Uh, well, 
if all the truth was exposed, lots of government officials, including the, the, uh, the premier at that time, would be implicated. That's how big the case was. Hu Jintao, yes. No, 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 no. Hu Jintao was party chair. Wen Jiabao was the... Was oh, the Wen Jiabao. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Wow. And remember uh, a few months ago, there was, uh, uh, there was a book released, uh, uh, I think, by Simon Schuster uh, mm -hmm. called Red Lurette. That was, that was the husband of one of Wen Jiabao's moneymakers. I see. I see. Wow. I read that book and uh, you'll see how corruption goes. Very interesting book. <laughs> so that's the first one. And second one. Second one, who, last name is Ye Yi. first yeah. name is Jian Ming. And he's the president of China Energy. This person is also, oh, well, he's also arrested in 2018. His charge for doing bribery, but his company also a multi-billion-dollar company. He's very close personally to Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden admits he actually talked to him weekly on the phone. So that's how close they are. And uh, he's the guy also came from a very humble beginning, but he had the last name of one of China's most powerful. Uh, family, Ye yeah, family, and uh, he gave the, he gave the outside world a sort of a he present himself as one of the family members, and started his business. Very vicious guy and very well. He was born in nineteen seventy seven, so not that old. Very smart in business, and uh, partnership with Hunter. He he and Hunter are very close. He's the one who paid a million bucks for Hunter to defend Patrick Ho. He's also the one who gave Hunter a forgivable and interest-free loan, five million bucks. So that's the guy. He was arrested by the Chinese government because numerous people, I don't know how many government officials and a, and a foreign government had was bribed by him. Okay, so that's Hunter's second friend. Hunter's third friend, this one, last name is Li, first name is Ming. And uh, as I said, he's board chairman and CEO of Costco. And well, anyone in China would, you know, anyone who understand what Costco represents would also recognize the importance of this guy's position. And uh, if you look at his, he's a member of certain Chinese People's Political Consultation Conference. Well, that consultation conference has been set up uh, in 1949, long time ago, and uh, they put some people, business people and uh, famous guys there. It's just like a sort of a political support group to CCP. But uh, what I, he, these are Chinese party party members, CCP members. If you look at that, pos that position, everybody who's on the top positions of state-owned companies are CCP members, no exception. Trust me, no exception. Every one of them is a member of CCP. So let's go next. That's also Hunter's friend. Last name Zhao, Z-H-A-O, first name Xue Jun. He's the chairman of the board and the same CCP party secretary of Harvest Group, Harvest International, the Harvest Hunter's original partner. Very, very important guys in China. And uh, well, what, what we see is that they are controlling billions well, in this case, hundreds of billions of wealth from China. So they think they can buy whoever they want to buy around the world, which 
unfortunately turned true <laughs> in a way. So the next one, that's the one, uh, actually that's the smallest fish among all this, but he's Hunter's client, as you said, Pat Patrick Ho, who came from uh, Hong Kong and who was found guilty. And he was sentenced for three years and fined for $400,000. Okay, the last one, the sixth one, is a big fish. And I think you know something about him as well, right? Yes. So John Thornton, he was the co-CEO of Goldman Sachs. And uh, he no longer is at Goldman Sachs. He's doing something else even more interesting. He is, uh, he's a chairman of, I think, Silk Road Exchange. Is a company that manages the finances of Obor, One Bridge, One Road, mm -hmm. or BRI, whatever you want to call it, Bridges yeah. and Roads Initiative. And this person has been gushing about China for a long time. But I think, Sasha, coming from you, it sounds even better. Please take it away. Yeah. Well, and he's very close to the Chinese leadership. He was, he was, he had been living in China for 25 or something years. For, uh, since 1996 or 20, yeah, long time anyway. And uh, he has a home here. I actually bumped into him a few times. Uh, and the, this guy, this guy, his main business, he's an investment banker, but now everybody knows his main business is to be the go-between of Wall Street and uh, the Chinese government and the Chinese investment that he, he plays that role, made hundreds of millions of dollars from it. Not long ago, I think South China Morning Post had a, had a special report on him and uh, name, name all the Chinese officials who he's close with. He's, the one he's most close uh, to is a guy named Wang Qishan. Wang, last name uh, W-A-N-G. And he's now uh, the vice chairman, vice, vice president of China. And there was, but he was for a while, he worked, he was number two of Xi Jinping. And uh, what he did was he was the anti-corruption czar, which means he can bring thunder to whoever he dislikes. <laughs> I like yeah. that. Bring thunder to whoever he dislikes. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm literally translating a Chinese expression. <laughs> no, no, that's that's very good. Um, so viewers, this is the first segment. And this is just about the Biden family. And something tells me that this is still the tip of the iceberg. If you think about the amount of money that is now being, you know, thrown about, especially in this post-COVID phase, six trillion, ten trillion dollars are just flowing like nobody's business in the United States. Who knows how much of it is finding its way back to China? And 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 all I can tell is everything is being put on the back of the taxpayer, the US taxpayer, you Sasha, I and all those yeah. who are US taxpayers, you are watching this. It's all being on your back and our future generations. And, and yeah, it's very, our very, children. yeah, our children. And very, very mm -hmm. sad. Uh, Sasha, if you want to just wrap up for today, this I think kind of brings it to just one part of Biden empire, uh, a corrupt empire. And uh, we also know about some findings coming from his uh, laptop, the Hunter Biden laptop. Uh, all that we has haven't been even now. started. We haven't even started what kind of lifestyle, what the, the that sort of thing we only yes. start this is the dry part yes very yes. dry because we just went through business deals right and right. Uh, we haven't even gone through the the gossip part yet <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and and we will be discussing a lot more in the days and months to come and watch this book is red-handed it is now available on amazon if you want a paperback or a hardbound you may have to wait a bit but the audio version and the ebook version are available. I have a copy of it. I am going through it. But listening from you, Sasha, is, is a whole new mm -hmm. level because you have all these interesting stories going around about people. Do you know them? You know, next time you meet them in 
on the street in Senate or wherever, they're going to see you with a new respect. Wow, she knows a lot about me. So, <laughs> uh, well, next time let's talk about Congress. Those yes. are people I know a lot better. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. And and viewers, do like, share, and subscribe to this channel, and also click on the bell button. I'm sure this video is going to be watched all over the world because uh, you, I know you've done some hangouts with Elmer in uh, Mandarin or Cantonese. I think maybe Cantonese. I don't know. Cantonese. Which one is. Cantonese. Cantonese. So the, the Hong Kongers and people from Shanghai, they know this thing well. But now we are trying to reach out to a wider audience. And, and Sasha is someone that I and want all the Indian viewers, all my friends around the world to know more. She is a storehouse, a mine house of information. And, and Sasha, if you want to wrap up for today, I'm done with my site. Please go ahead. I just say, look forward to our next part. Absolutely. See, she's a consummate professional. She, she, I mean, she knows how to leave you on a cliffhanger only to find out what happened next. Thank you very much, Sasha. Namaskar. And Thank we'll be you. back again very, very shortly. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.